as local, national and international. The strategy defines a clear role for government in articulating national objectives and, and, and in, in doing so in trying to mediate the varied priorities and the many voices of demand that make calls on the higher education system. So a whole of system perspective is, is needed in trying to align demand and provision and in overseeing the performance of the system and collectively responding to shared societal objectives. So I suppose going back to what I was saying at the outset, the, the strategy is setting a clear performance challenge um, and individual institutions need to see their own performance challenge, not simply in exclusive institutional terms, but also in terms of how they relate to and work with partner institutions as part of a broader collaborative network. Accountability for performance at system, at institutional and at individual levels uh, is a constant thread that, that runs through the strategy. And as I said, in, the government is charged with articulating national priorities to, to sort of to, to set the agenda for all of that and to form the basis for an outcomes-based approach to system accountability. Um, the strategy redefines the relationship between autonomous institutions and the state through the introduction of a strategic dialogue process and through stronger links between performance and funding for higher for publicly funded higher education institutions and developing that strategic dialogue model. Um, based on the principles set out in the strategy and drawing on good international practice where, where this, this process is, is already in place in, in a number of systems will be an immediate implementation priority and there's, there's work underway on that. I've been talking about diversity mainly in terms of the, the varied needs of stakeholders in society but system diversity can also, as, as many in this audience will, will well appreciate, uh, can be viewed through another lens in particular, I would draw attention to the fact that that future demand for higher education that I referred to earlier and that significant projected growth in demand, if it's to be met on the basis of sustainable system growth and the sustainability of the system is going to be a huge challenge for us um, as we try to match uh, reducing and constrained resources to, to, to growing demand. Well, it's very clear that the future development will not be simply in the hands of publicly funded uh, higher education institutions and that our capacity to meet that future growth and demand uh, will, 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 not be, will not be met effectively if we, if we are relying exclusively on the public system. Um, flexible di delivery and capacity of that scale required is going to need to be met through a variety of sources. And the strategy in particular looks at the role of, of the independent sector of, of other higher education institutions in Ireland and, and in terms of how their strengths can be encompassed within a, a broader, vibrant and dynamic higher education system. Uh, a network, a diverse network of, of high quality public and private institutions can obviously offer wider choice uh, in meeting the full range of public needs. And as part of a regional cluster approach, uh, in meeting the range of learning needs within regions, the strategy identifies the potential for a greater use of targeted funding uh, for provision from the independent sector to complement the role of, of public higher education providers in meeting identified priorities. And that's an essential uh, element of, of, I suppose, the vision for the development of system collaboration and uh, partnering between institutions on a system basis that institutions will be challenged to identify institutional strategies not just in terms of their own strengths but in terms of how those relate to other providers in the region and the extent to which collectively institutions within regions are meeting the full range of learning needs of, of the communities they serve, meeting the full range of enterprise development regions of uh, enterprise development needs of, 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 of enterprise within their regional economies and ensuring that the sort of unnecessary duplication by competition is obviously a, uh, an important dimension of how systems operate. Unnecessary duplication is, is an unnecessary way, uh, use of resources and there is a need for that kind of uh, more challenging interaction as part of a broader strategic dialogue process between institutions within regions and there's a clear role for independent providers uh, to, to, to uh, to, uh, to contribute to meeting the learning needs of regions within that context. The, the potential of that sort of targeted funding approach is already being utilised, um, for example, in the, in the current Springboard Initiative, which a number of you will be familiar with, which has made an open call 
to all high quality higher education institutions around the country to propose flexible solutions to meet the needs of the unemployed and we would be anticipating some announcements on foot of the, the expressions of interest process that was conducted under the Springboard Initiative over the coming weeks. In providing for this particular aspect of diversity, um, it's going to be important to draw together accountability and regulatory frameworks to underpin the broader aims for consistently high quality delivery. We need to reconcile the public need for strong accountability uh, for quality with our aim to entrust appropriate functions to institutions. And we also need to ensure that Ireland's higher education institutions, whether public or private, can compete internationally and are viewed with respect all around the globe. The legislation that's uh, under drafting to provide for the amalgamation of our quality bodies will play a very important role in this. Uh, I know Cora will, be, will probably be saying more about the role of the, the new body uh, when, when he follows me. But the, the qualification and quality assurance bill uh, that I mentioned is, is now at an advanced stage of drafting and we're hoping it will be published and passed before the, the current Dáil session ends. That's certainly the intention of our Minister. The opportunity is, is being taken in that bill to develop and strengthen the existing legislative framework uh, as it relates to qualifications and quality assurance and to introduce a number of new measures uh, including in particular the new quality mark and code of practice for provision of education to international learners. As most of you know the new body will be responsible for the external quality assurance of providers currently involved with HETAC and FETAC as well as the universities and that's an important point. Um, so I think in bringing together the, the existing quality assurance processes of all of those providers, it will bring greater coherence to the quality assurance landscape and will hopefully help to ease the burden of compliance on providers, both in the, in the further and higher education sectors. And the, the, the central importance of quality assurance will be emphasised in the legislation by explicitly linking it to programme validation and delegation of authority. The bill will, will build on the important work that's already been carried out in developing the, the National Framework of Qualifications, deepening its implementation by requiring awarding bodies and providers to ensure that learners have achieved the learning outcomes associated with particular levels of the framework. And a requirement to have awards recognised within the framework will be linked to other measures including the Code of Practice. So the bill, we hope, will will strengthen and bring forward the existing uh, qualifications and quality assurance uh, framework within Ireland. Other changes that I just might mention that are being looked at uh, will relate to the opening up of delegated authority uh, to make awards and extending the remit of protection for learners provision uh, as well as providing for an appeals mechanism from decisions of the new body. Obviously continuous quality of improvement is a, is a constant aim of all of our higher education institutions and one policy platform that has a particular common purpose I think across both public and private providers is in the area of internationalisation and the internationalisation of, of education activity. Developing a, a shared internationalisation strategy has allowed Ireland to draw on the strengths of, of public providers and the independent sector and I think Ireland and the broader higher education system can only benefit from that kind of collaboration. Um, obviously, the importance of reputation and international confidence in our systems of quality assurance is absolutely critical in supporting our, our ambitions on this front. Um, and the new legislation will be a part of, of our, uh, our efforts to, to build and enhance that international confidence, which is so critical to us. I'm going to conclude at this point because I'm probably taking up uh, more time than I intended. But I began my remarks by talking about diversity and the need for our system to dynamically evolve to meet what will be fast changing needs uh, across the wider environment. Um, as any evolutionary biologist can tell you, if any of you know evolutionary biologists, there is no evolution without variation. Uh, but we shouldn't let our emphasis on diversity blind us to, to the collective purpose that we're trying to serve, which is to build on the excellence that exists across our system and, and to support it in growing and improving to meet what will be new needs of students in wider communities and significantly growing needs of students in wider communities, all for the ultimate benefit of society and for Ireland's recovery, Ireland's prosperity, our reputation, our international standing, which has taken a, a severe battering, um, and the work that, that that, that you're engaged in here 
in trying to advance standards and performance is part of a, a much bigger imperative for Ireland in terms of advancing quality and performance in our higher, higher education system, which is going to be absolutely um, critical to national recovery and future prosperity and it's, a, it's an extremely important agenda and I hope that your work here today will benefit all of you in terms of the shared learning and shared experience that the, the workshop format today can offer um, and I wish you well with the, with the rest of today's proceedings. Thank you.